okay so good evening everyone once again um uh, okay so i was saying that we started off on python basics so basically understanding how the python programming language works the point of the language what happens why we need it um and we're trying to also make you understand that it's not as hard as it seems right it's not complicated it's when you need to do a complicated task that you now you need to find your way around it but in it is in its way it's not just complicated right it's the tax that makes it complicated let me just put it that way <laughs> so uh if you're trying to do something simple well you can always do it with python and another advantage i was going to mention was flexibility it gives you that flexibility to do whatever you want to do however you want to do it unlike excel and power bi where um there's a rigid way right there are rules and don't and uh, of course you know there are some things that you can also do some of the things i do in python that you can also do uh with excel but if you were to look at it that would be very very tedious uh whereas in python all you need to do is just like maybe three lines of code and you're there i can prove that it's three lines of code i should be able to do a plot like print do a visualization actually so uh, i don't know if i should is this a good time okay so there was this work i was working on with python i sent it to some of my uh we can find it on github i think uh let me see if i can get hold of it github um slash my name no i think it's pipe sorry it's just one of the work that i've been working on and is this 66 yeah let me just open the simple one i think it's 64 so don't mind me i know it of parts because i've I worked on this for quite a number of time so um uh, sorry just give me a second Is 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 stop shouting! Oh. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. I should be able to find it. Um, no books. Um, so it's a it's a repository with a lot of notebooks. So mine. So the one I worked on in particular was merged. So it's a very very simple one. There's a simple one and a complex one. So I'll just show the simple one. Uh, I can drop the link to the complex one, but I don't want to scare you. So this is more of like the analysis, I think. So here we're just trying to make a simple product, right? Comparing two data together. Then also, okay, sorry. So also here too, we're trying to do just basically bar plots right of course these plots are not interactive because um of the libraries i used so by now you should know what libraries is right so because of the libraries i used they are not interactive so you, can, you cannot interact with them but you see one advantage here is that i can just easily with so there's a particular part where i just loaded the data in so like for instance now this is automated so if you you don't need to have these files on your system you can just go to maybe have this notebook and sorry so you can just have this notebook and when you run this file it's going to download all the files that need to be downloaded in about 3.5 gb actually well it's going to download all the files that need to be downloaded right it will do the necessary operations it will import the necessary libraries it will load it so this is where we loaded the data it will load it and it will do this analysis immediately so it's like more of like the automation so if i need to change the data maybe there's another data an updated data all i need to just come to the script and probably change so it's currently picking files from google drive just change this link changes and put the updated one and it takes it updates it and automatically regenerates all the uploads so that's some of the things you get with python uh i don't know if you can do automations on excel i'm not that good to the extent but in fact 
I don't know if you've seen the videos. There are some videos where there are some people that now because recently Microsoft just released uh, a proper implementation to to use Python in Excel, so you can write your Python codes inside Excel and perform complex operations with it. Basically, maybe like loading your data, something like that. But the point is, Python was involved. Python is still involved. So I think so. You can see this more like a simple analysis. Everything is here from loading the data to the plots. There are even explanations, right? And it's just lines of code, basically. No additional to just Python. So that's one of that's some, some of the things you can do with it. So that's how. Maybe the next class I'll share the complex one, <laughs> or maybe one of the classes will break it down. So, so um, uh, that's just talking about Python. So, um, so last week on Sunday we talked about NumPy and pandas. Uh, how NumPy is a numerical, a numerical Python like n NumPy. So, uh, you can use it for numerical operations. Usually. You use Python and oh, sorry, use NumPy and Pandas together, like they're in sync, like they work easily together. So, in any instance where you need to perform analysis, actually, should I use this? Okay, I'll use this. I'll use this notebook. I'll just segment it. So, uh, in any instance, I'll, I'm going to walk us through a simple operation that you can just go through first things first. How you do when you want to analyze a file. So here we, I think we're reading. CSV files right here. I don't have Excel file out that I've read it, yet, but you could also read with Excel. I'll just show us how so we can try it out. So we did a few things with pandas. So pandas, I think here was did I not put the demarcation? So pandas is basically like uh actually I've done something like uh hold on uh something like big demarcation to demarcate that this is pandas exactly something like this oh i'm not connected so uh pandas is more of like uh i don't think it has an acronym it's just used for data frames right so like you, it helps you easily convert wherever your data is it's very easy to bring it into um a table into python you can load it with pandas so you can just load it so when you load that data it's convert everything to a table something that you can relate with something that you can see and you can begin to do whatever thing you want to do um i think this has connected so i can i think it's sufficient to start running from here uh, come on yeah so i think i can run Someone taught me that you just to run all below, run after. So I'm just going to run everything below this. So import pandas. So these are some of the little things, just to take a recap, anyways. Um, this file is no longer here, so that's going to be an issue. I just have to stop it. So basically, you can load your data, you can read your data, which is what's fast enough. Okay, so you can see. Sorry, can you see my screen? Just so it now maybe a bit smaller. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. All right. So um, so this is loading it with a. You all know what this looks like. It looks like a dictionary, right? Uh, so that you can see why it's, it was important for us to go through the basics because we are going to be using it a lot actually. So uh, here is loading the data into the data frame and it coming out right uh you can read so i'm just going to show of course here yeah, i mentioned that we're going to have issues right because this file was uploaded so if i upload it i have to re-upload it that's the issue uh, if i'm getting it from maybe a link so um let me do something interesting so i think i have on my github somewhere i have a file so let me see. Um, I think it is USN. I participated in an hackathon. Uh, yeah. So I have a file stored there, and I'm sure of the format. It's an housing data set. So it's in CSV with a link. You can see it here. So this is data set. 
um let me zoom in a bit yeah so this is the data set so what i'm just going to do is i'm going to take this just a bit of you know going around so i'm going to uh, replace this with the link now after doing this i would have to change this blog to raw yeah so just a bit of github um, and uh, moving around so i'm going to run this little by little so you can see now all you have to do was pull in that data uh, because i was on collab already it was even easier it was faster of course the data is not that large um sorry one second Esiba, load that thing Esiba, load it all right sorry about that so um so you can see that he had to just load it straight so if you have a csv and of course you know we have to, how do we recognize a csv file so i just had to go to the repo and if you see the file part ending with like dot csv some like dot xlx right you can just try this and it should work if it doesn't work then you can begin to debug you can slide into my dm to talk about it and see the operation so um so all i did was replace this now let's see what happens to the file so what is happening here is that all of this is being stored inside this variable sleep of course it was a different data that was there but i just interchanged it and let's see what happens when i run the rest so i'm running sleep edge of course it gives us the first five um sleep tail give us the last five and see this um sleep dot shape it tells us the, the size of the data so it's about 6,000 rows and 6 columns. Uh, so you can even confirm that here. You can see 5999. Remember Python start counting from 0. Then sleep.info gives you the info of that particular person. I'm oh, sorry, the info of the data. So you can see if they are missing data, if they are not missing data, something like something of that sort. So you can see all of this. You can see that it's not non null. That means there's no empty data so there are 6000 data that is not null basically you can place none for not and you can see the types of the data so the integer and object is basically text i mentioned that in the last class so now of course there will be issues here right because person id is no longer in this data what we have is id location title bedroom bedroom and parking space so using these labels would not be proper right because of course if i run this now i'm going to get an error obviously because there's no person id in this column so what do we do we can just do something like um sleep dot columns that's all i run this so to give you all the list of columns now you can store this inside a variable called what column so let's say um okay before i store it in the column i can convert to a list actually now it's in a list but it's in a different kind of list so if you check this and you do type sorry and you do type you see panda score index blah, blah, blah. so we don't want to like this so we want to have it in a list so to convert it to a list is very simple all you have to do is just do dot to list and put a parenthesis around it and run this so you see that the output will look like an actual list now if you check the type of this um type so you're going to see lists so what do we do so let's store this into a column into a variable called col let's say columns and take this and put it here so we can see the output so you can see column now now column is now actually is now a list that means we can iterate through it we can say um for instance we can say columns in square brackets zero that would return the first item which is id now we can now use this particular columns this result and place it directly into this place so what do we do before you know if you have person id to bring it out so because we already have everything here in columns so what we could do is just col 
is and put zero so you can guess what will happen so it's going to print out everything in columns like what you have in id which is zero right so you can do the same for this so rather than person id h you could just do columns um uh, so um okay before i now go to the next one what i was about to do now so columns remember columns is a list uh i could select multiple things let's say from a range i use this with i look but you could do this with a list in normal list so what you could do is you have your start index and where you want to stop so something like zero to um four zero to four we go from zero one two three four is not included so if you run this you're going to get high d location title bedroom remember we did this with uh when we're dealing with i lock and lock lock i don't know if you remember from last class so we want to do the same thing here so we want to bring this just as four remember it's like six id location title bedroom bedroom and parking space so we just want this four so what do we do we put zero is to four and you run this okay oops uh okay so i'm getting kiero is looking at this it's saying the objects are not a column so what i think happened is i just need to remove one bracket yes so run this and this should work now so that was it so i had so when column come into this place it comes in with a square bracket so me having uh two doubles two brackets already means there's going to be like three square brackets so that wouldn't work so it's either two or one if i'm assessing multiple things it has to be two if i'm assessing one thing it has to be one but in this situation columns doing it like this means it's going to return a list so a list is going to be enclosed in a square bracket and i already have a meta square bracket so you can just see how i got this so i'm just trying to say if i replace all of this now the issue i had with when i was using id i was using the exact column i was using the exact label it's no longer be, it's no longer going to be an issue so if i decide to replace all these labels that i use right here with what i got from column i can run this with different data and it's still going to come in yeah i'm still going to get some results so like that's just the points should i um um i actually want to just shape this part i don't know maybe i have to rearrange this notebook because um i shouldn't disrupt this so that people can use it so i'll just when i'm creating another one i would do that so i'm just going to do um today come on yeah so today uh really what i want to also go through is a a normal operation so when you're dealing with numpy and pandas and an additional one that you can use as for your visualization and that library is called uh, matplotlib as in called matplotlib so it's like matplotlib and i think usually there's dot plot as plt so we are you know what this means from as in like an alias then plt so we import this so i'm going to import the rest that we have used that is like um import pandas as pd and import numpy as what np you know run this so now we have all the three libraries so these are like the basic ones you can, you can move around with this easily then i'll go up and fetch um that link i used um that's this one let's just work with this data so i have it here right and i'll store it in let's say df you know it's like a common name data frame then i'll run this and this should run and df.head so more like we're running something new haha so you can see it here now uh data frame the head so um 
okay let me show us a bit of analysis like more of like visualizations right that you can see so um for instance now we know that this is an housing data set that has location as houses um i think i showed us value counts that's df um you have your location right then that's i want to assess this then if i use dot values dot value underscore count it means that i want to see all the objects that are in there and count it like how many kanu how many adamawa how many lagos something like that so you can see right here the counts the various counts from benway to Bono. i think this is now arranged in terms of uh, descending order from the highest to the lowest right so you have your location so you can see this easily you can do the same for title um uh, if you do that for bedroom that wouldn't make sense because you want to this this is like a text data right good so let's let's see um um uh, for instance now we can plot like a distribution plot okay so there are different types of plots um sorry I have not talked about plots. So there are different kinds of plots. I think I mentioned it when we were talking about in Excel when dealing with plots. There are different types of plots. There's a distribution plot. There's um there's a count plot. So let me see if I still remember. So let's let's just do something simple with this df dot lock. So I'm just going to copy this. I come to paste it here. Dot plots and uh, this run ah uh, sorry it's coming out with an error no numerical data to plots okay let me see let me change this to bedroom ah of course this would this would be a a, a hack so let me so rather than do this so let's get um let's get the dictionary okay don't let's use the dictionary let's get the location and bedroom into a data frame so that'll be like uh data and that'll be two so that's going to be bedroom sorry bedroom and i also have location here so if you call this now you're going to see just location and bedroom so let me see if we can do a simple plot with this so initially the other time told us there's no numerical data to plot but right here i think it's just plotting uh a a straight plot using this bedroom so i think i usually don't use this method actually uh this is taking a lot of time that means what's coming out <laughs> it's not going to be good yeah because the data is small and should not take this long to plot so i think i just discovered this method i'm just going to stop it right let's just do the simple plots i was trying to see if i could just do something plot because data frame actually has a method to plot pandas actually has a method but i think the reason why we don't usually use it is because this is much easier approach that's the reason why we have multiple libraries so don't forget earlier i imported math plot library for plotting as what plt so that means every way i'm going to be referring to this i would refer to it as what plt good so let's let's do something with that so let's say plots plt right dot plots so i think i can put this df lock inside let, let me try and see what we have on df lock um, okay so this is a bit messy right uh we are seeing emo we are seeing all of this here but we can't make sense of what all this data inside of this place right 
so what we need to do is we can take this old data right here um i think we can convert it into a dictionary so if you want to convert this into a dictionary now what you do is just as we did for this just put to dict and put this around it ah okay maybe not this so there are multiple ways okay good so i guess it's this so it changes yeah there's i think with an array you can use dots to list without putting the iphone sorry the iphone underscore then with dictionary you can just do this of course i think there's to dict too i don't know why i don't really pay attention to it it's of no importance so we have been we we have the count so we have all of this inside a dictionary now let me say i call this uh, states equals to right and so if you want the output back states then you have this now so states is now holding this data so now let's come back here and change this to states s t a t e s and let's see what happens ah uh, it could work with that okay so another thing i usually do is because i'm trying to prove to you that it's not always straightforward of course there are some simple ones you can do right so you could also mm -hmm, you can go online and just do a simple search as okay uh plots a dictionary um i think because i usually write a lot of python right plot a dictionary um with matplotlib so you go through this right then you can start seeing different options of course i usually suggest to everybody that is going look for look out for stack overflow so here you see stack overflow and it's a known repository that you most probably get something there it's it's just simply saying that oh there's no problem you're trying to get that is not on this place of course there are problems that you don't see so i'm just going to open this and you see how other people have done it their approach how they've gone about it how they did it and all of that so you can see i think sometimes i should just jump straight to the answers right and you can see what is here so usually this is why i don't suggest using llms when you're just starting out so you can easily do this and you see your results like just try and understand but the point is you have to understand it what is going on in that um, solution right so this solution is not marked i think none of the solution is marked ah usually some that is marked anyways so sometimes you need to come here when you're just having issues you know not every time it goes smoothly so i'm just trying to show that it's not difficult but when you're not getting it you don't need to freak out you just need to get some help that's all it's pretty straightforward so now um i think i should drop this right so i'm going to should i um let me see okay so i'm just going to continue now i think i should just plot what this is supposed to bring out anyways so with this so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to convert all of this into a i'm going to store it separately somewhere then i'll store this one separately somewhere so i don't know if you still remember when we did um uh, keys so remember state is a dictionary so if you do state dot keys you have all the keys that are involved in that dictionary and if you do states dot i think it's states dot values you have all the values that are involved in the dictionary simple so the way the math this plot works is it needs two things x and y what you want to have on the x axis and what you want to have on the y axis 
So in this situation, let's say what we want to have on the x-axis, that's the horizontal axis, is this. So we just take this and put. And what we want to have on the vertical axis is this. And we'll do this. I run this. Um, now, can you see the plot that we have right now? Yes, you're not seeing the label very well, of course. Uh, this is where other things come in. For instance, I think if I want to do it, I think I'm not so familiar with it, but I think it is uh, X label. Then I think I can change the position um, to, sorry, I think 90 degrees. Position. I really can't remember that. There's a way we convert this. Okay, but if this doesn't work, let's just do. I can't remember this right now. So what I'll just do is I'll just switch it. Just switch the positions. So now it means that the values is now on the x-axis, right? So in this situation, you are probably going to have um uh, you have it the other way around you can see it now so from rivers to quara to eboy something like that then normally you need to do this plt dot show so it will remove this uh this design that starts the english that was there that code is going to eliminate it so you're not going to see it there so uh so basically, it's as simple as X and Y. So let me change this. Now I can decide to switch this into a different kind of plot. So this is more of like a line plot. You can see they are whole lines from lowest to highest, something like that, right? So I can decide to change this into a bar plot. I think, is it bar plot or I think it's just bar? Sorry, I used bar too. I think it's bar. Yeah, it is bar. So you can see it now. You now have it in bars. So uh, this is like for each date. You can see Quora is. Uh, hold on, I think. Okay, I think Rivers and um, Quora have the same thing. Hold on, no, this is not what I was hoping to get. I was hoping to get them, uh, get the bar horizontally actually. So I think there's an option for that. It should be bar each. Ah, okay. So looks like I'm already doing more than myself. So I think there's a way to convert it. So all of these things. I don't really pay attention to it because I feel like it's something. This is the way I actually do my analysis. I don't. You don't have to. You don't have to know everything. You just have to know the basics. So there's all of these people have documentation for Python. Python has their own documentation. They have their own site where you, you are going to find everything that has to do with Python. Also, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib. They all have. Sorry, they all have their uh their ways or everything around it. Uh, what's going on? This is not stopping. They all have their ways, um, uh, their documentations where you can go to, you read something and you can implement it easily. So it's actually a very good thing to learn that way because if you know everything, if you know only the ones that you know, to practice or that or to move forward to learn something you might not might be a bit of an heck so um so i'm just going to take us to the math load the documentation um math plot sleep sorry um i'm just going to try documentation now this will give you everything on math plot leap. We are looking for something in specific. We are looking for bar plots, right? Just do like this. Then it will 
this will take you straight to where you have bar plots and everything you can do with the plots there are also some websites like geeks for geeks they are very very useful in doing those kind of plots yeah sorry they are very useful in explaining simple concepts so you can also um use them while you are trying to move around trying to sorry while you are trying to implement uh, a particular thing right so uh i think i should close the tabs and let me use it so i can have space so let's check this out let's see how what it looks like so you can see uh <clears throat> you don't really search, you have to pay attention to everything sometimes you can just jump to the examples um i think at the end you're going to see examples using something like this right so you can check all of the examples that they have and if you feel like okay you can read this you can understand so you can see bar they have heights um the width bottom align data or this means that multiple arguments anyways so you can take some of these things and uh, work with it basically just free um do whatever stuff you want to do it because there can be some instance where you are being asked to do something that you've not done before so you need to know how all of these things can work right how you can go about it so i'm just going to stop there i think okay this was the bar which i was trying to use uh i don't know why it wasn't working it was supposed to make an horizontal bar plot right but for some reasons it did not work so i'm just going to okay maybe i should okay let's make it work right so let's look at the examples here uh so you can see first of all it works here you can see the plot here so what uh this might be a bit difficult for everybody to read so let me stay away from here um <laughs> uh, let me go back I don't know what to this eventually. So uh, I'm just going to stay away from there. So basically, you can move around your plots. Maybe we'll go that into it properly. But what I wanted to show us today was uh, how a data analyst work goes around when you're working with Python. How you can go from start to finish. From okay, there's not really there's nothing like finish. <laughs> Well, you can move little by little when you load your data what you do i think we did the same thing with excel sql and power bi i think we should be here too so i think okay so some of this i've done i've done it already but i'm just going to go through it again so um usually you want to import all your libraries so for instance usually it's not in this order the other doesn't matter actually sure. it's usually something like this so you have pandas you have numpy you have matplotlib so it goes in this order but like i said it can be in any order so you do you load this then you load your data frame then into a variable if you are using multiple you load the multiples then you move ahead to now start looking at okay what my what does my data looks like right so after df.head sometimes you want to check the tail this data is a very clean data actually there's no errors in it So you want to check the tail, want the other things in the tail. Then you also want to you want to know if they are missing data from your if it's an miss if it has empty data. So you need to do df data frame dot information info basically. Then you see all of this. Now you can now start analyze. Okay, what are the kind of data that I have, right? So when you see the head and you see the tail you know you have an overview of you don't have to necessarily look at everything because if you have like a million rules it will be useless to look at everything so you need to just do something like this where you go through everything i'm uh, sorry just having an oversight of what it looks like then you check the bottom two right then uh you could also check the information are they missing data what are the object types right for instance now this is, is looking like numbers in the bedroom 
but you don't actually know if it's numbers until you do this because for instance now so i'm just going to do something tricky um i'm going to convert it to a string but uh bedroom um dot i think as type so i can use this to change the type to string and uh, store it into the f bedroom back so you're going to see what will happen here now so this was a bad way to write the code i should have tested it to be sure that it's working before i store it here but i guess i'm familiar with it so i'm going to run df.ed again and if you see this you'll find out that bitroom is still numbers okay so let's take a trip back to df.info so you're going to see now that bitroom here is objects that means it is seeing it as a text data not a number so in case you are now planning to do some operations with it like maybe you want to multiply or you want to add bedroom plus bedroom plus parking space something like um this so let's say data frame bedroom um plus data frame um bedroom sorry plus data frame parking space so right you stop for that so if i run this now there's going to be an issue it's going to say oh can only concatenate string not integers so it can concatenate string to string not integers to string so that is seeing it as a string so i can i'm going to use it to convert it back so I'll just use int and run this again so if i run this back now you can you you're going to see here that it is now converted to integer so that operation that I was trying to do before, if I try it again now, um, you can see that everything has now been stored. So I can even store it into a new column and say um, data frame, um, how do I call it, rooms or space. So you are bringing the bedroom, the bedroom and the parking space, so more like how spacious is the house that's an business space so if i run this now and i go back to check what the data frame dot ed is so you're going to see that there's now an additional one called space with the summation of all of this four plus one two four plus one five plus two seven so you can see that that's added all of this all this this and this into this so basically i've created another column now um i'm not after that you know that's you checking around so you converting things right um uh, i think we should just go um and so let's assume that you've done everything that you now have questions of course remember as a data analyst you have to have questions that you want to ask there's a need to have that background have the understanding of what you want to go and do i always emphasize it like you should not just enter your data start working no you should have a plan what do i plan to do sorry what do i plan to do how do i want to go about uh my data basically what are the specific things i want to check out so for instance now um we can see okay so we can do something on tie two right so since we have all the spaces of the house into tie two we can say oh okay let's bring all the titles together everywhere uh title is appearing so we could say that would be df tie two so you just know oh sorry this will not get you that value counts will get you there exactly so you can see here it looks like we have more mansions in the data set compared to cottage or a detached duplex right um 
so if you want to so if you're not interested in the counts and you're interested in uh you're interested in just the unique items you want to know the new unique items and it's you you can do that you can just do the item dot unique and i think you put this around the parentheses and run this yeah so it gets all the unique items from parent house to um and it stops at terrace duplex i think is this arranged no no arranged it's not sorted i don't care but if you also want it sorted right maybe you need it for something you could use uh so this is an array python i think python has a library a command more of like a keyword called sorted yeah something like this the way we have um uh, i think i mentioned the last class with minimum and uh, maximum something like this it does a command called sorted so i can put everything inside i run this so you can see everything sorted so that's if you just want to sort it right you need to do something with the sorted uh, the sorted list right uh so let's let's now assume that we are ready we have cleaned our data of course data cleaning is another how should i put this is another old thing on its own i guess that's all we're doing cleaning our data learn how to clean with python right and formatting it then i think we just do more analysis and we call it wrap up python then we're going to project so um where was i so i think i mentioned uh kind of what i was saying uh, uh i really can't remember where i dropped off so i talked about title i was talking about sorting it right okay so i said a bit about data cleaning we need to clean but not in this class um where was i going to i really can't remember okay uh, so let's assume that we have gotten all of our data they now want to start seeing some plots right because the end goal for data okay not the end goal basically but you you're going to use those plots to communicate to your stakeholders right so uh i think i'm a bit rusty with plt it's smart plot view so plt dots um plots so usually um I think there's a way I do this. I just get the help straight up. I think um, this should stop or control tab and takes me out. Can't really remember right now. Um, there's a way I do it here. Nah, it's not coming anyways. So what I'll just go straight is to do is so we uh, are looking at want to do a plot, right? So I think the other time I was supposed to do something like this but i could not change the bottom mm. so let's let's try and do that again let's keep distance let's take this down okay so i have plt dot plots so let's assume we have a uh we have this then also usually i prefer to do it with the dictionary because i can store this and store this automatically so i'll just take this and go and store it inside the dictionary then we can use that dictionary to interact with each other so as i like i did before right then uh what do i call this let's just say type of house type sorry put this so i can type properly type of house so we have the type of house now now you can see all the counts is attached to it 
now i just need the for the x variable i need the houses itself and i need this one itself so i can just do um type of house dot keys then i can do type of house dot what the values so i get the values right then i'm um, so inside this place i'm going to put the x and the y so let's do um what i said i was going to do so this time around our x is this i think we'll just have to look up how to i've, I've done it before and our y is this normally i should store it in the variables faster that we go so i'm plotting this right now i don't know if i'll have that same issue down here so let me change this to bar exactly but that issue is still happening down here that the items are overlapping so we need to change the x variable sorry i said variable the x axis right we need to change it but i cannot remember it so i'm just going to do uh rotate x labels you guys will forgive me yeah so you can see it here uh, i think there are some examples here so i think it's simply using uh let me see. usually i go to stack overflow like i mentioned then this side too is very good so i'm just going to skip straight to the answer and see what they did oh yeah so this is it x ticks so i go back then do plt dot x ticks and set rotation to what to 90 so this is going to put that in 90 degrees let's see the outputs ah cut it now so this thing is still showing here i don't want it showing so i think i mentioned that you can just put plt dot show so it eliminates all of those numbers jargons you don't need to see that exactly so you can see it now it's much more simplified so you can see how clean it is now we just uh, these lines now uh, sometimes you may also need to expand the size of the plots you need to adjust the size make it bigger make it smaller to do that you need to add uh, so let me leave that first so you need to do uh, plt dot figure so figure is what we use then you set the fixed size um i don't know i think this uses um pixels i'm not sure so running this is supposed to create more of like a shape but it's not create anything so i'll just take this copy this and put it under it now you see that the shape it will take it will differ from the first one i suppose yeah so you can see how big this is now right compared to this that's smaller so if you want to reduce it you just have to play with these variables for instance let's say five five so that's like a square it makes it the same you can see it's not really a square it's not looking like a square actually but it's smaller and because we have used this uh, command here to change our rotation you can see it's it's easier that way i think you can even tilt it so let's say 45 so you definitely know it's going to be slanted ah something like this but it's still not okay i think i like the 90. yeah okay good so now that's not all so if i look at this data i don't know what is on this part so that means i can 
add my x labels my labels to this x axis y axis i can even add a title to this so for instance now uh okay, i think we should we can work with this so let's say we want to add title all you have to do is plt.title and put whatever thing you want to put inside uh, count of count of houses house type ah that's a better name house type in nigeria you see that it's going to have this so, so we can do that easily if you want to put the a name to the y axis all you have to do is just do um, plt dot y label and inside you can just put in whatever you want to put in so let's just say count so you can see that counts now I don't think we need to put anything for the X label. But if you need to do that, it's also the same pattern. So all you just do is plt dot x label and let's say house type. So you can see down here it's house type. But you see the reason why I say you should not put it because it's going to stay below the lowest one. Which is like which is dotted, and we already know we can see Martian flat stand now, so it definitely is an house type. So I don't think it's really, really, really necessary. So you can see how I changed. I think the first plot was I should have kept the first one. Let me redo it. So, um. I think I just use plots. So you can see this is more like a line plot, right? You just need to understand the different types of plots that they are. I think I still have the math plot the uh, documentations open. So uh, plots, right? So you can just see all the I think plot types. Yeah, you can see the types of plots. Um, there's normal plots, there's cutter plots, there's the bar plots. There's so this is where I think you have a lot more plots compared to when you were dealing with maybe Excel, right? So of course, you could still do it, but here you could change things easily with lines of code. So you can see the different plots that you don't know that you need depending on wherever you find yourself. So you can see that and i think they have examples here yeah so you could go through the examples to i don't know broaden your understanding or try more things out right depending on the kind of data that you have so this is just with one library actually so you can do more with other libraries i think the seaborn that's one i use a lot because it's very easy to use I I think in Anaconda you don't need to install it it's already so it's usually import seaborn seaborn as SNS yeah so this is how the seaborn tool is is I think it's relatively more easy as to use or for me basically I think I like it but I have to just show us because most of the time you hear matplotly 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 so you will not be out of what's going on what are they saying so um i think we can try and do one more plot actually i think i'll be talking to myself for an hour <laughs> is there any questions uh uh tito i think your network was going off and on or oh, any question how is it going um do I should too okay yeah it's going well I can say we're following but this is becoming interesting mm, I like the word interesting <laughs> um my advocate is not talking no please don't say anything Anyways, uh, okay, maybe we should be talking about to finish. 
so um we can explore more plots so let's do something else so um uh, i think we just did line plots so let me go back to the data because i didn't come i didn't pick the data with an actual thing but let me see um so here's data so we can say so definitely Kano is appearing more than once because this is about 60. so we could uh okay i have to use a complex function i'm trying to avoid that so what i want to do is i want to sum all the rooms for Kano. like everywhere Kano is appearing i want to sum up the data so i will know the total number of rooms that Kano usually have or adamawa or lagos or gombe something of that sort mm. so just stick with me please stay close so you don't fall up you fall out the way so um df dot it um just to see you know know what we are doing good so we want to like i said we want to do location and the sum for bedroom uh, i think you could do bedroom bedroom and parking space let's do the three let's do yeah so uh, so what we are now going to do is um we are going to have to use something called pivots in excel here well here it's not called pivots it is called group by um like i said we, we are just going to have to learn by doing something so let's say we want to that means we want to group this data by the location and we want to sum it we want the aggregate to be a sum so how do we do that you call the data you put your group by group by right so it takes a normally parenthesis but you have to put the column you want to group it by which is what location so we want to group it by location and we want to aggregate it by what by um by sum so here we go so now you can see that it is now oh i think it did for heidi that would have been wrong right that would have been wrong but let's look at bedroom let's just let's take our eyes off this let's let's put our uh, attention on bedroom bedroom parking space and space so you can see here that everything is now summed up uh for all 36 states so the only things you have in this place is 36 states so this is like pivot in excel also i can decide to display a set of rows let's say oh i don't want to display everything so what do i do i can just pick pick out the ones i want to display so let's say bedroom um what else do i need bedroom and parking space space can see this is getting longer right just because of what's needed to be done so you can see now that we have location we have the bedroom now we have just bedroom and parking space and you can see the total counts of everything so let's store this in so we, let's say some of houses in the states and that'll be too long um how do i put it state house i don't have variables name coming to my head right now so, so state house and we are going to call state house here state house dot head so you can see the output of what we are doing good uh but this thing is coming in I don't know, I'm not supposed to be saying this this additional thing. So it is complaining that uh they were actually houses, they were text data in it because I use aggregate sum. So I'm going to just take that out. Um uh, I think it should be um numeric sorry, numeric equals to true. Yeah, I think it should be this okay numeric only so 
it's not like I knew this before. I just saw it here, and I knew that was what it wants me to do. Ah, it did not work. Got an argument. Oh, I don't think he's here then. I think it should be in aggregate. Yep. And there you go. Error gone. So, you ju it's just by understanding I was able to figure out that, oh, you should be in aggregates. So, we have this now. We have all of our data. So, we can decide to take, okay, let's take location and bedroom. So, bedroom is now giving us the total number. We want to do an analysis so, because we want to know the houses that are in each uh, state, the number of sum of houses that are in each state. Let's see, we are talking about bedroom now. So, um, what do we do? Let's say uh, PLT. Okay, before going there, we need to store, sorry, we need to store this into a list. So, let's say, um, what do we call it? Um, PLT, I think it's the location. So, remember, we have df.location. And we can say dot unique, right? This gives us the unique ones, and of course, it's not be sorted. But I already showed us the way we can sort it. I think we can even use numpy sort, right? Yeah. So numpy is np dot sort, and this does it for us also. Here we go. That's two ways. The first one is to use sorted in this place. The other one is to use numpy dot sort. It still works so we have it sorted so we can store this into um list states so this goes into list states of course you are wondering how do i have to go through all of this every time i want to do a simple thing well it's just the workflow it's because we are just doing it for just this one Right, so in case where you have to do it for multiples, you will have to repeat all the steps actually if you want to do it. So, but because I want to make it very simple, I don't want to make it very complex, so I'm going it little by little. So, list of states as of the list of states, right? So, all I need from here is just the sum of bedroom. So, what I'm going to do is say bedroom underscore sum equals to oh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't do this yet let me first get it so i think i stored it in state house then i want to the bedroom aspect so you can now see the bedroom aspect right so what we will now do is uh let's store this into bedrooms let's say bedrooms equals to and we can call it and see the results here good then we can now go ahead and do our plc dot plots then uh we want to put on the x axis uh, the list of states sorry just take out now z i supposed to copy list of states and we want to put in the uh ah okay sorry i'm supposed to get the values actually so let me see i'm actually interested in the values ah, okay serious so if i do zero one i'll get just one what if I do this? Okay. Um, okay. So I think this is where this comes in. I look. Uh, I want to pick the first. I'm not picking the first row or the second row. But I want to pick everything. Um. On the second row, let me see this. I can maybe rusty with all of this. So many indexes. Okay. Uh, 
aqui. Let me put this here. Ah, it didn't work. So what I want to do is I want to get this number here. I can use dot dictionary, right? But I need the values. What should I say values? Ah, you are. So I have it here. Dot values. So it gives me all the values. So this is actually what I want to put here. So I'll just replace this to dot values and take this off. So what I'll get in bedroom is values. So right here I can just come here and put bedrooms. Bedrooms. I run this. So you can see we had that same issues we had earlier. So you can just since we have done it before, I just copy everything. Then go back to where you have this. I just put it on there. They know that you are taking this off and replacing it here. So you should have, so you need to change something. So it's no longer count of house type, it is now sum of bedrooms. Uh, bedrooms in each state, right? So let me just run this first. So you can see this now, of course, then you can now change maybe your plot, what the bar plots, make it turn into a bar plot. You can see it now. Then your, so it looks a bit crampy, so let's make it bigger. Let's make it, let's say four, sorry, man bigger. Let's say eight by four. So eight is like the width, why four is like the height so you can see it now very much clearer so this is supposed to be in sum or oh, let's say total total sum yeah so this is much more simpler right just um, having the sum for each bedroom in each state. So from here you can see that they were they are not too far from each other, right? Uh, Abia Adamawa, I think is even arranged. But if you look at Lagos here, of course Lagos is small, but it's still competing with. But it's not it's not as much as I think the top one here is um this Bono. Yeah, Bono has the highest. So you can see this, and you can decide to um do more stuff with it maybe edit it change the colors change the colors of the bar i'm not going to go into all that today because i don't pay attention to it actually but actually i think you should anyways so you can make your clothes look nicer i think it should be blue i'm not sure my color doesn't really come out well so uh what else what else i think yeah so you can i think you can even change this to an instagram i think with an instagram is east and uh, fingers crossed uh, beans must increase monotonically i think let me see beans equals to uh, i don't know if this will work okay I can't use Instagram for this because of the kind of plot it is. So Instagram will not work. Let me just return it to bar completely. Then you can also add more plots on top of this. So like you want to display another plot, for instance now. Let's say what we have here is bedroom. So you can say you want to add another one. Let's call it uh bedroom right so let's say we want to add bedroom to this of course you I mean you have to do the same thing and call it bedroom i think i can put it here let 
then I'll change this to bedroom. So if I run this, obviously it should save the file for bedroom. So I'll just have to take this and add it down here and call this bedroom. Ah, to be S. Then this will have to be S too. Yeah, so you can see it now. You can see that there's multiple colors here right now. Now, in the situation we are just looking at just this, uh, these plots, it won't make any sense. So you, to understand what it actually looks like, to understand which color is representing what, that's where you need to do something like, um, you need to add a label. So to so this, so we call it label equals to um let's see bedroom then you had the label to this equals to bed what bedroom then you need to i think if you run like this i'm not sure you get it it's supposed to be clear but to make these labels come out that's why we do plt.legend so all these are legends i don't i don't know if you remember from excel so you need the legends to come out so when the legends come out you can easily tell oh the bedroom is the one with uh with blue color i think and the bedroom is the one with green color yeah something green anyways i don't think it is green so uh that's how you can you know have more data and if you don't want it like this then you might need to start doing some adjustment for instance you want it side by side you want the bedroom beside the bedroom you need to start doing some adjustments to um to your data but to do something simple right you can just do this i think if you change it back to plots you would have a line that looks clearer yeah so you can see these lines now so I don't know if you have seen stock charts and all of those. I think this is where this makes sense when you are dealing with timelines from a particular date to a particular date. How was it changing? But fortunately, that's not what is here. What is here is just the trends of the count of bedroom houses. So you can see in Quara now, we had a low uh, bedroom, sorry, bedroom and low bedroom. Like obviously, if your bedroom is low, the count is lower. Then I think the bedroom should be lower, but not the same for. See, look at Jigawa. I think this is Jigawa here. They have less bedroom, and their bedroom seems to be a bit higher, right? Looking at some other ones, it should be like the lower the bedroom, the more lower bedrooms you will have. But that's not really accurate because there are different types of houses inside these places. So it can be that maybe in uh where were we? I think we're looking at Jigawa. So it may be that in Jigawa they have maybe more duplex and less um bungalows like single apartments, something like that. So that's where I don't really don't know. Just hypothesis hypothesizing. So um I think that's where I'm going to stop for tonight. Um, and it's getting late, but I think I'll just stop there for tonight. Uh, just showing us a bit about plots. I think I've gone to documentation, so if you know you have any issues, you can go to you can go online, check out it works um, in terms of documentations, right? Uh, if you need to check uh in terms of like i said you need to go online if you have issues you can just check then you can communicate with us communicate with me in particular or anybody on the group so i think i'm just going to stop there for tonight and we can call it eight nights